bring in Simon Michelle from Fig Securities for more on how it's impacting bond markets. Let's kick it off with global bonds because the yields seem to be a little stronger. There's been some positive data obviously out of the US and then oil prices also playing into it. Yeah, absolutely. Good afternoon, Ingrid. And you're absolutely right. I mean, those commodities that are oil rallies have been certainly playing into some higher rates as people assess the impact that those high prices might have on inflation. So we're seeing um, US yields up around about 10 basis points, obviously off very, very low base, but uh, moving in the opposite direction we had of late, that's for sure. Interesting, though, to see the Aussie yields no longer, or the Aussie market, rather, no longer pricing in a rate cut going forward. And this is before we get inflation next week. That's right. So the Aussie two-year Commonwealth Government bond rate has been down as low as about 1.75%. That was indicating that the market expected the cash rate to be cut further by possibly another 25 basis points. Mm. That's back up about 2.02% now. So we're certainly seeing no... Uh, you know, in that short duration, uh, rates remaining above the 2% level, which is the current official cash rate. How fragile are those yields? I mean, next week, if we see inflation, miss expectations come in a bit weaker than expected, could we see a big move? Look, I think so, yes, because I, I think the, the, situation, the problem the RBA has is that you still have the ECB, the Bank of Japan, Bank of China, all continuing to support markets, pushing mm -hmm. rates down throwing uh, money at bond buying. Uh, you've got the US delaying any potential upward move. And so this is really putting on the pressure of the RBA. They've held firm at 2% right throughout that uh, period. So, you know, if we don't see a lot of movement, we do get uh, further deterioration, they will be forced to uh, follow those other markets down. All right, let's talk uh, the corporate bond space as well, because Rio Tinto coming out today uh, saying it will buy back uh, $1.5 billion of debt, and that's maturing in 2017-18. In What's behind that move? That's right. So uh, following on the heels of Fortescue, which has mm. done the same thing, they're using uh, cash that they have available to pay their short-term debt issuance programs. So we saw Fortescue uh, buying back its 2019 US dollar issue. We now have Rio Tinto out. They'll be doing a any or all offer on their 2017, which currently has around about 1.75 billion outstanding and a Dutch auction offer on the 2018, which is about $3 billion US outstanding. So obviously paying those shorter uh, issues will, uh, in effect, extend the average maturity uh, profile. But then we've also seen Sydney Airport issue 900 million last night. Yeah, look, an issue we like here at, at Fig Sydney Airport. They managed to issue 900 million US overnight. Interestingly, the uh, indications on margin were around the 200 level. The uh, strong demand they had got it away a lot cheaper. They only paid 175 over Treasury. Really positive, senior secured 10 year issue. So, positive outcome there for Sydney Airport. All right, Simon Michelle, appreciate that bond snapshot. Thank you. Thanks, Ingrid. Simon Michelle there from Fig Securities. And speaking.